Amen. And all God's people said, as I walked into the church this morning early, I heard them practicing and uh, could not help but sit down and take it all in as they worshiped. Come on, Nathan and Mario, come join me. Happy Sabbath, church family. So Nathan, I have to ask you as we begin, how was school this week? Good. Yeah? Talking to the microphone so they can hear you too. It was good. Yeah, there was 84 kids. Hopefully they were nice kids with brotherly love. Yeah? Oh, wonderful. What grade are you in? Are you in ninth grade this year? Fifth. Fifth? Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. All right. I have to stay. So I was wondering if you'd pray with us, your dad and myself, before we begin. What do you think? All right, why don't you say a word of prayer? Okay. Oh, Holy Father, may we have a great day today, Lord. And thank you that we're blessed to have Sabbath today. Yes. And just may we have all of the great rest of our day. And just thank you that we get to praise you and know you, Lord. And just may yes. you just help everybody in the church family with all their struggles lately. So just please help us. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, David. Yeah, you walked down with him. All right, church family. Welcome and happy Sabbath for those online and in person. It's good to see your faces. I'm excited. This is the Sabbath you want to be here. You look at me like, I'm not so sure. This is the Sabbath that you want to be here. Or even multiplying up front here. This is the church of Philadelphia. This is the church that we want to be. Well, we want to welcome you to your church, the Shehela Seventh Amish Church, as we begin. Well, this is my friend. You probably don't know him very well. But his name is Mario Pesacrita. Did I get it right? I've really been practicing the last. We've known each other now, was it two years? Three two years. years. Two years. I met Mario, was it four years ago? No, it was that same year. No, was it? Yeah. Are you sure? I think so. It might have been one year before. I was going through some stuff, and I looked in my very first Bible, and I wrote in there the first date from when, uh, when you and I did studies. I thought I was three years in. I'm only two years in. This mm. is the second anniversary. Wow, praise the Lord. Now, yeah. what about when I met you at the gospel concert? How many years ago was that, though? I'm not sure. I'm thinking sure. that was four or five. Could be. So can I tell a story on that real quick? Please. All right, I want to tell a story. Hey, one more prayer, one more prayer. Okay. Dear Lord, thank you for friendship, brotherly love. Lord, you've loved us with an unfailing love. And Lord, we want to emulate that love. We want to grow in that love. And Lord, may we share that love. But you speak through us. May the Holy Spirit be upon our hearts our ears and our minds as we seek you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. All right. So I was invited to do a worship thought at the gospel concert in Centralia. And it was just a short worship thought. And at that time, after I gave my worship thought, they had amazing, you've been there, the gospel concert, music, uplifting God. And as the music was playing, I looked across the room and I saw Mario and his beautiful wife, Allison. I didn't know them. And they were just going to town on that trumpet praising God. And I assumed they must be Christian. Were you? No. Nope. You weren't. Because who plays praise music like that for God and is not a Christian? But he put himself in the house, another house of God, and look what happens. So I stayed for the whole time, the whole concert, and I met him in the hallway. I went through all the people, and I went up to him, and I introduced myself, and I told him I'm John, and I serve at the Shehala Seventh Amish Church. I said... I want my church family, which is you, welcome family and friends, this is your church. And I said, Mario, maybe you can play at our church sometime some praise music to God. And you were so ecstatic, and we did it within the next few weeks, right? No. No. I, I thought, I wonder how much he could pay me. He looks like he comes from a church with money. That's what I thought. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I did think that. Oh. So it didn't happen. It didn't happen. But that was my first meeting with Mario. And we'll dig into that a little bit more. But let's look here. Let's, let's go on. Let's take a look at this here. So let's go to Revelation. 
Let's pull our first slide up here too, will you, Richard? Let's go to Revelation chapter 3. Last book of the Bible, which means what, church family? Oh, come on, look at the first five words. One through verse one. What's the first five words? The? Oh, the revealing of Jesus Christ. Are we excited about it? If Christ came today, where would you want to be found doing? Praising him. Right? The faithful, look at that, faithful church, Philadelphia. Now take the city of Philadelphia out of your mind because we know the brotherly love is not much over there anymore. But the faithful church, Philadelphia. Maybe I should go with what Philadelphia means before we dig in and read it. Hmm. Philadelphia means one who loves his brother. That's why Mario's up here today. I asked him to come join me because I love my brother Mario. And I've seen what God has done. A filio meaning to love. A deep love. Not just a like, but a love. Adolphus meaning brother. In the children's story, it was sort of hard because sometimes love is not reciprocated back. But praise the Lord, when I asked you to come up, you were willing. So, let's dig in here. Let's go to Revelation chapter 3, verse 7. I will have Brother Mario read that. All right. Should we read through all of them and then go one by one? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So we're going to read seven, uh, chapter 3, seven through, thir- uh, 7 through 13. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things say he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See? I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet, and to know that I have loved you, because you have kept my command to preserve. I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world, to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God, and, I, and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I will write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Mm. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we need to find out and know what we love. Each of you today loves something. I want to use a Bible verse that came to mind. What we love because he first loved us, right? Why am I here today? Because Christ first loved me and demonstrated that to me and to you personally. But now we get to emulate. We get to follow his example and grow in love. And love our brothers and sisters. And by this, our brotherly love grows. So, we've already identified what the Church of Philadelphia means. So, let's go back up and take a look real quick at the slides. So, remember, we said Ephesus. The church that what? Fell out of love. Remember, they had the works right, but they fell out of love. You can be in a marriage and do everything right, but if you fall out of love, what do you have? Smyrna. What was Smyrna? Do you remember? What was Smyrna? The persecuted church. And it grew under persecution because they had to choose. Who did they serve? Pergamos. Oh, what what about Pergamos? What was that church? Feel free to look into your Bible. What was it? The compromising church. It sounds sort of good. Compromising, right? But when you compromise God's laws... What happens? All right, what about Thyatira? Which church was that? The corrupt church. Hmm. What about Sardis? That was last preached on. The dead church. Now, we've given time periods for each of these churches, but remember, they they relate back to where we're at today. We represent one of these churches. 
Now, I know the next church is Laodicea, which Pastor Enrique will preach on. That's the time frame that we're living in now. But this church, let's go to the time frame, the next slide. Oh, wait, I want to show you where it's at, too. It's in modern Turkey. So that's where it's actually located. Pergamus going on the far left. Thyatira, Smyrna, Sardis, Ephesus, Philadelphia, Laodicea. Okay, next slide. The Philadelphia church, the faithful church, the church of brotherly, and we could add sisterly love, from 1798 to 1844. All right, I'm already doing too much talking. It's your turn. I love, so, so when we see 1798, um, you know, sometimes I see these dates. I'm like, well, where did they get those dates from? Where did they pull, I mean, where did we get those from? Hmm. And in, seven time, in, in 1798, Pope Pius VI was uh, taken prisoner. He was, he was dethroned. And that's when we see the beginning of the, we see the falling of the, of the papal power at that time. So that's why we get that year of 1798. And of course, we sh uh, m uh, and many, if not all of us, know 1844. Um, so important. You know, it's the day of the cleansing of the sanctuary when Jesus became, uh, began his ministry in the most holy of holy places to intercede for us. So that's amen. where we get those dates from. Amen, amen. Let's go to the next slide here. All right, well, we read Revelation 3, 7 through 13, but let's unpack it now. We already identified verse 7. Mario, would you continue in verse 7, these things? Let's unpack it verse by verse now. These, thing, these things say is he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. So a key is used for what? To open, right? We go home, we take put the key, grab it out of our pocket, and we put it in the lock. Get your garage door out of your mind. I know you probably pull open your cars and you hit the garage door button. However, if you're parking your car outside, you get out of your car, you take your key out of your pocket, and you put it in the door, and you turn it. A key opens a door, and a door leads to a particular way or path. Jesus says, I am the door, right? If, there's the conjunction word, if, anyone enters by me Christ's door he will be saved John 10 9 not might you enter Christ's door you will be saved Jesus also said I am the way we're talking about the way right that door leads the way he is the truth he's clear he's concise he's unadulterated truth which leads to life and we often stop there, but let's not stop there in John 14, 6. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. And then he goes on to say, no one goes to the Father except through him. Through me, he said. John 14, 6. So a key opens a door to a pathway. God opens the door to his kingdom of salvation. This key opens the door to the way, and that way leads to eternal life. Whew, that's a mouthful. So, as we think about it, these, as you've heard in the past weeks, these tie in to the sanctuary. Not only the sanctuary that was set up on this earth with the children of Israel, right? Very specific specifications, but the sanctuary that's set up in heaven, which it was, looked just like. Mm. Same description, same size. Here's, here's a verse in Psalms. Your way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God is our God. Now listen to the next verse. That was Psalm 77, 33. This is Psalm 73, 17. It says, until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood. Today, what is this? A sanctuary made by man's hands, but dedicated to God. What are we seeking today? The truth. We're seeking God in his sanctuary during on sadly during the life of Jesus the world and most of the leaders at that time would not open there's the door there open their hearts to truth remember that the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the people they would not open their door to truth Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, came to take away the sin of this world, but they did not believe in him 
And don't miss this. They did not confess his name as Lord of Lords. Brothers and sisters, only Jesus has the key of David. Only Jesus can open the door that leads to the path of redemption and ultimately salvation. Should we read a little more on that? In seven still? Yeah, right where you left off. He who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. Mm -hmm. Now we're verse eight. Eight. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength. You have kept my word and have not denied my name. What kind of door was left before them? A. Will that door be closed at some time? As the days of Noah will also be the coming of the Son of Man. Right? Was it a surprise to them? It was, but it shouldn't have been. We believe Noah preached 120 years, but when that door closed of the ark, the people in the ark were saved. The ones that walked through the door were saved. Mm. Today, the door is still open. It is open, and no man can shut that door. Right. You know, once we do that, you know, once we commit to him, no man can, can uh, shut that door for us. That has to be our own choice. In Job, in, uh, in Job 12, 15, if, uh, Job 12, 14, if he breaks a thing down, it cannot be rebuilt. If he imprisons a man, there can be no release. When he does something, he does it. No one here can stop it. Mm -hmm. You know, when that door is open, no one's closing that door but him. Mm -hmm. But he gives us the choice. He gives us the choice to not get on that ark, right? All right, let's go down and read the next verse now. This is a little bit harder to read. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. So what do you think? Using the Bible, what does that mean? So when it says a synagogue of Satan and say they are Jews and, uh, and, and, and are not, we can relate that to our time now because we can see that the church now is spiritual Israel, mm -hmm. right? We are spiritual Israel. And there's people professing to be Christians in, in name only, but they're, right. but, uh, but they're not. And we have a... And the best verse I could find for that, there's many verses... For that, but the one that I liked was uh, Ephesians 2.19, which is, Now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. So we were grafted onto that vine. We were grafted on with him. We are members of that family. We are spiritual Israel. Mm -hmm. So those that say they are Christians and are not. That, so it's, uh, it, it relates to this time. So that verse should sound familiar to you. Do you remember another church that had that same saying? Mm. Do you remember that? Have you been studying during the week? Let's look at the persecuted church in chapter 2. Do you remember Smyrna, chapter 2? Chapter 2, verse 9. I know your works of revelation tribulation, poverty, but you are rich. I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Christ knows. You know, we can fake it. We often say till we make it. We can look good in our suits and bow ties and ties. You know, I brought you something today, Mario. I like that tie. But I brought you a bow tie. <laughs> <laughs> can you tie it? No. Neither can I. That's why my wife ties mine. Here you go. Here's one that's a clip-on. <laughs> this is my gift to you. Oh, thank you. We can look good in appearances, but only God knows our heart. I was asking Mario if he was going to wear a bow tie this week, because I'm sort of partial to him. My wife tried to say, you need to wear this tie because it matches the outfit, but I said, no, I really want to wear a bow tie, so we compromise. It is good to compromise in a few things, but not God's law, and so mm. I, she compromised with me, and I'm wearing a bow tie, and she tied it, so, but I, show, I was almost ended up with a tie today, too. 
But brothers and sisters, these are strong words. If there's two paths, one path leading to life, one path leading to death, which path are we going to choose and confess? Keep going, Mario. Let's unpack it some more. So uh, when it says, indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet, uh, know that I have loved you. Um, I think a really good verse for that is Isaiah 45, 14. Um, I'll read the whole verse. It says, uh, God's word says, thus says the Lord, the labor of Egypt and the merchandise of Cush and all of the Sabaeans, men of stature, come over to you and they shall be yours. Okay, hear it. They shall walk behind you. They shall come over in chains. They shall bow down to you. They shall make supplication to you. Why do they make supplication to you? Well, it's because it's saying, surely God is in you and there is no other. There is no other Amen. God. So it's so all will recognize in the end that there is one true God and Amen. that even though they have been falsely claiming him, they're going to come down, it says in this Amen. verse, and they're going to know that there is one true God. Amen. Then 10? Yes, sir. All right. I love this one. It's my favorite one. Back to Revelation. Re uh, Revelation 3.10. Because you have kept my command to persevere. Now, it won't be that same way in everyone's Bible. The literal translation is the word of my patience. And I love that because you have kept what? Kept my word, mm. right? The word of my patience. So, who are these people? That, who are these saints that are keeping the patience? Who, like... Who, uh, who are they? And if I asked all of you, we could come up with some pretty good ideas, right? We could come up with some ideas about who yeah. these people might be. But God's word tells us what it is. We don't have to come up with our own idea about it. So if we go to Revelation uh, 14, 12. I love it that you're using a Bible verse to answer the question. In Revelation 14, 12. And, and, and notice where this is. Right at the end of the three angels' message. I don't think that that's an accident, that the, that the, that the, the faithful church, that the church that, that God has nothing against, that we were called to proclaim the three angels' message, that we're described as in, in the same way here at 412. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Mm. So in my Bible, it says the command to persevere, but that word in Greek is hupomone, which means patience. And it's the exact same Greek word in 412 when it says here is the patience of the saints, the hupomone. So you know that those, that those line up. Um, and then I just have to get too excited about it because it's like, because then when you hear about keeping the commandments of God and the patience of the saints, I heard that somewhere else too. Mm -hmm. That brings something to mind. So that I could jump around the Bible, we go to 1217 in Revelation. And the dragon was enraged with the woman. He went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God, right? Mm -hmm. Same people. But mm -hmm. now it adds on and have the testimony of, of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. And, and again, we can all as a church go, what do you think testimony of Jesus Christ means? And we can come up with a lot of good ideas. Mm -hmm. But we have to use the Bible to interpret the Bible. So we go, we can find out what the testimony of Jesus Christ is in 1910. Revelation 1910. In Revelation 1910, God's word says, and I fell at his feet. I should wait for you guys. I love to hear those Bible pages flapping though. It's my favorite sound in the world. I love it. In Revelation 1910, and I fell at his feet to worship him, but you said to me, see that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Mm. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Mm. Mm. That's just amazing. Uh, it's amazing. Our church, we're so, we follow God's word, right? We're people of the book. That's right. We, we get our explanations from the book. If you ask an Adventist a Bible, if you ask an Adventist the question, you should get a Bible study. Hopefully, yes. Not an answer. You should get a Bible study, That's right. right? And we keep commandments. We keep all ten commandments. That's right. And we didn't forget that fourth, the one he told us to remember. That's right. And we have the testimony of Jesus Christ. We have the, we have the spirit of prophecy. And we know that, that Sister White mm. had visions that I believe with all my heart are true. 
Amen. And uh, it's amazing that we see that tied in. I actually have one of our quotes here, Ministry of Healing. It says, Christ is ever sending messages, as to you, to those who listen for his voice. Mm. The sheep will know the shepherd's voice. Thus today, the very men who most need divine instruction often fail of receiving it. And I highlighted this because they do not place themselves in communion with heaven. Mm. It's a blessing to come to church on Sabbath and worship. But if this is the only time you've worshipped this week, you're missing all the blessings throughout the week. It's a blessing to come to Bible study. We had an amazing Bible study. We're studying Revelation in, in my office every week and we study Philadelphia and we have a it's full and we have a big group and the ones that are already studying ahead are understanding so much more and that's why I encourage each of us as we were digging into the seven churches I mean it's so I mean there's layers it's like an onion it's layer upon layer upon layer upon layer if you ever say I think I get it all then I, I think you're missing it because it keeps peeling and you keep finding more and more verses Absolutely. And then we see, too, that, that, all, that all of Revelation speaks of what has happened before and, it's a, and, a, a, and, and things now and things to come, you know. And, and it says that in, in Revelation 1, I am the Alpha and the Omega, Jesus says, the beginning and the end, who is, who is and who was and who is to come. And we can interpret every church that same way. We can look at it back in history and we can apply it to our life now. And we can look ahead as an example of what we need to be and continue to be right. until that day Jesus comes back. Amen. Amen. So the second part of the verse, I, I stopped. I got so excited at word of That's patience. That's good. No, keep going. I'm with okay. you. I, will, I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Chapter 2, verse 10. Chapter 2, verse 10. Yeah. How about verse 11 now, chapter 2? Behold, I am coming quickly. All right, who's that speaking? Are you sure? Yes, he says, I am coming quickly. It may not feel quick to you, but he says he's coming quickly. Think about it. What is even the definition of quickness? If Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he always was, always will be, and is eternal, what's his time frame? You know, you know, we have a limited time frame. We know at some point we will die. So my question back to us is, even though I don't like dealing with death, what do you want to be found doing if it is the last day? Say it's the day that he comes or say it's the day of your death. What do you want to be found doing? Amen. First Corinthians 9, 24 and 26, talking about that crown what kind of crown is that? It's not a crown to rule. It's not a crown that a king wears. It's Stephanos. It's a crown that, it's like a, it's like a wreath of a crown. It's like a, it's like a medal. You know, in the Olympics back then, mm. if you would have won, you didn't get a gold medal. It was for the honor. You got a crown, a Stephanos. It was mm. that type of crown. And if we look in 1 Corinthians 9, 24 uh, through 25... Uh, Paul says here, you do not know, uh, do you not know that all who run in the race all run, but one receives the prize? Run Amen. in such a way that you may obtain it. Amen. Right? Amen. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to attain a perishable crown, but for us an imperishable crown. That mm. same word, Stephanos. Mm. And I just love this from uh, Ellen G. White's Ministry of Healing. It says, the Christian life is a battle and a march. In this warfare, there is no release. The effort must be continuous and persevering. It is by unceasing endeavor that we maintain the victory over the temptations of Satan. Mm -hmm. Christian integrity must be sought with, with uh, a resistless energy and maintained with a resolute fixedness of purpose. Mm -hmm. So we have to keep running that race. race. Yeah. Amen. Still saying the same verse, but Mark, I want to backtrack a little bit. So, yes. behold, I'm coming quickly. Mm. So, I'm going to read in Revelation 1, verse 1 to you. 1, verse 1. The re revelation of Jesus Christ, the revealing of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants, that's us, things which must shortly take place. That's quickly. All right? Now, I'm going to go back. I'm coming quickly. So, I think of other Bible verses. I want to go to the last book of the Bible, Revelation 22. 
the very last book in chapter 22, 22 starting with verse 7. Mine's even titled, The Time is Near. Verse 7, Behold, Jesus says, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of this prophecy of this book. Verse 12, And behold, I am coming quickly. My reward is with me to give to everyone according to your work. Mm. Verse 20, He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Over and over and over again. He says, I'm coming quickly. And in between the crown and coming quickly, he says, hold fast. Mm. Hold fast. Do we have a slide for that on holding fast? You know, as, as uh, Mari was reading, God pleads with his professed believers, that's us, to hold fast to the truth. Have any of you ever ridden a motorcycle before? Yeah? Yeah? Pretty exciting? Cody and Oliver, I know you have, right? Yeah? Now, when you ride a motorcycle, and the faster you go, you want to be careful not to hit rocks in the road and not, you know, where the edge of the road goes down. You don't want to get caught in the crease there. You know, you can go down really easy. How many of us would ride a motorcycle without our hands? Hold fast. Do you not grip it like... I know when I was teaching my mom how to ride a motorcycle, she gripped it so hard that she pulled the gas back, and she <laughs> went and doing a wheelie and was running with it because it popped up and she fell off, and then she's still holding on, and she's running with my motorcycle. Thank goodness she didn't get hurt too bad. She did get a little scrape. But it says to hold fast. So Mario addressed that we have a crown. I'm coming quickly, and to hold fast to the truth. If we go to church and they have great music, that's wonderful. But if we're not preaching out of God's word, where's the truth? Amen. If you ask any of us a question and we answer it not according to what the Bible says, then it's what we think instead of what God says. Thus saith the Lord. We need to know what God's word says and we need to direct people according to God's word and even break it open. Like you said, a Bible study. Mm. A Bible study. I had... Two families yesterday at the school. We had 84 students, praise the Lord, the school. I had two families come up to me, brand new families, said, we want to go to your church and we want to have Bible study. And they said, we want to know about the truth. Mm. I looked them right in the eye and I don't think they were expecting it. And I said, I had my Bible, and I said, every answer I give you needs to come from this. It needs to come from the Bible. All right, let's keep unpacking. So you read the crown, verse 12, chapter 2, or 3. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name. So he or she who overcomes will make a pillar. What's that mean? So... When, so when Jesus enters the ministry, and you can look at, you can study this so many ways, it's tied into the sanctuary so deeply, that when Jesus begins his ministry in the holy of holy places, in Solomon's temple, you see pillars all in there. And mm -hmm. we can be one of those pillars, symbolically, holding up mm -hmm. his work in these end times. The three mm -hmm. angels' message, we can, we, can, we can, you know, proclaim the Sabbath, we can do those things, we can be a pillar. So like we're doing today. Sanctuary. Yep. Do I have a slide on that? Let's, let's skip this one. We'll get to it here in a minute. Let's skip this one. There we go. We have pillars holding up the church. You represent that. Mm. Do we have any Sabbath school teachers in here teaching the young people? Yeah. Do we have a deacon that came, or deacons that opened the church and prayed in the hallways in the classrooms? Do we have a deacon that closes the church? Do we have deaconesses that help not only in celebrations of upcoming weddings, Pastor Enrique and Inez, I'm excited about next weekend, but also for memorials. We have you hold up the beliefs of this church, and this church beliefs come back from what the Bible says, the truth. Let's keep unpacking that even more. So I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, mm. the New Jerusalem. And I write on him my new name. And we know that from, we see that again 
in uh, 217, and I will give some of the, him some of the hidden manna to eat. I will give him a white stone, and on the stone a new name written, which no one knows except him who mm -hmm. receives it. And we see God changing people's names, right? Yes. Because it's not just about our name, it's about our character. Yeah. So, so when he's changing our name, it's not just he's, you know, he's going to change me from Mario, for, uh, for Mario to Mariano. You know, <laughs> hopefully he changes it something with his, with his, with his righteousness, with his, right. I want his name on my heart. And I love the idea that if, that, it, that if it's written on me, that there'll be no room for any other marks to be written on That's me. That's right. You know, I want his mark. I want his name written on me. Amen. Nothing else. Let's stay in the book of Revelation chapter 14. Let's stay with the thought of names. Let's let the Bible interpret it. Revelation 14 verse 1. I'm with you, Mario. I want his name upon mm. me. Amen. Revelation 14 1. Then I looked and beheld a lamb standing on Mount Zion. We know the lamb represents who? Jesus. And with him 144,000 having his father's name written on their foreheads. Mm. Wow. Whose name? God's name written on our foreheads. I put in my Bible completely his. Mm. God's attested we are God's attested by his name upon us. Amen. Hmm. Permanent. Permanent. Can't take it off. Anything else jump out? Do we need to unpack anymore? I think we got it. Hmm. Well, the, well, we have it for the time frame that we have. Right. We could do entire sermons on one verse right. in this. There's so deep and there's so many layers right. to to unpeel and I'm sure there's even somebody out there like well he didn't bring up this aspect yeah. of it and there's whole we could have done a completely right different sermon with a different angle of it so if so, so if we missed your favorite bit of it we're sorry <laughs> there's so many amazing tie-ins with it Richard can we go back to the prior slide because how do we make it applicable in our life today 2nd Timothy 2 12 this is how we do it this is the wrong way if we Endure, we shall also reign with him. That, that's the right way, I'm sorry. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Matthew 10, 32 and 33 supports this. Therefore, Jesus said, whoever confesses me before men, Jesus says, I will also confess before my Father, who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him also I will deny before my Father in heaven. Mm -hmm. So today, when I ask you, who do you serve? You know. God knows. We might not know. Mm. We will know by your works, hopefully, right? Hopefully the works of the Spirit, the love, God's love and His joy and His peace and His patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and self-control comes out, but hmm, I really think it's important to confess. Sometimes when we're around other people or outside of church, and we were living with secular people, we maybe, I guess if we asked our neighbor, maybe that'd be good. We talked about brotherly love and neighbors. If we asked our neighbors, what would they say about us? Well, he's a doctor. Well, that's good. He's a pastor. That's good. Um, he's a husband. Well, that's good. But what would they say? Would they say, you know, when I was sick, his wife brought food over mm. and I didn't have strength and he mowed my lawn. Mm. Serving others, right? What did Christ come to do? He came to serve. We, you know, we often hear it said, is there enough evidence to convict us of being Christian? And that goes back to confessing God, not denying who he is and not being embarrassed of who he is. Mm. What else now? Should we bring it home? Let's bring it home. Bring it home. 13, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now, we all have physical ears, but let us have spiritual ear, right? Yeah. Let us understand things spiritually. Let us have a, interpret Scripture with Scripture. Let us, uh, you know, let us really know in our hearts. Let it really become a part of us. Amen. When Pastor Enrique and Inez get married next weekend, Inez will take on Pastor Enrique's last name. 
As Christians, we have an opportunity to take on God's name and have it on our forehead permanently. But it's a choice. They're choosing to get married. And it, it's even tomorrow and the next and the next. Even on when they come up and walk up here and they're taking their vows, they can still walk away. It's a day-by-day -day choice choosing to love each other. Remember in the very beginning I told you each church represented a love story. Two churches, Christ didn't reprimand, but the rest, he said, you need to work on these things. But within all the churches where were represented as the candlesticks, right? Christ was standing among them. That is encouraging to me because that means he doesn't give up on us. So when I met Mario, I was thinking at that time, you know, have him come to our church, have him play a special song music. I wasn't trying to steal him from the church he was worshiping at, even though I didn't know he wasn't a Christian. I didn't know. We never got into contact during that time. No. Nope. And it never happened. And I wanted you to see his talent and the music that he could play and meet his wife. So my story, what I thought would have been awesome, God's picture was so much better. Down the road, I met Mario at the school as he was hired as our band director. And you've heard his testimony, and if you haven't, go back online and watch. It's amazing. But during that time, Mario came to me and said, I want to know the truth, but I want to hear it strictly from this. And he had very specific questions. If you would have told me when I first saw Mario and Allison just playing the trumpet, and it was amazing, Allison, my, my heart was moved. But if you would have told me that he'd be up here preaching with me this Sabbath, I don't know if I would have believed it, especially if you would have told me he wasn't a Christian at the time he was playing. And he was playing to make money, not in praise to God. Now when he plays, we don't pay him, and it's praising God. You know, we have this simple mind, at least I do, and we think there was nothing wrong for me inviting you. Hmm. But God's picture, what he had for you, was so much better. Amen. And he knew that brotherly love would grow. I was part of your baptism on February 1st, and grow, and grow, and now you're giving Bible studies, and it's growing, and growing, and growing. That's the brotherly love of the Philadelphia church. And that's the church we want to be a part of. <laughs> Give me a hug. <laughs> love you, brother. I love you, too. Well, I want to call out to you today. I really believe the Holy Spirit is working on your heart. I may think small, but I want to give you an opportunity. I want to pray over you today. Maybe you want to start Bible studies. Maybe you want to be baptized. But if you feel the calling on your heart today, I want you to come right up here. I want you to be an example today. I want you to show that you want a difference in your life. So come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Why do not you go down there? Come on up. I've talked to many of you the last few weeks, months. Some of you want to be baptized. I know Brian does. We're going to do it in Kenya. Kit has just finished Bible studies with Mario. Allison finished Bible studies with Veronica and said she wants to be baptized. Levi's in the process of finishing his, baps his baptismal studies. But this year, I believe, Levi, Bethany, and Maggie, all of you, I believe God is calling. I felt really impressed this Sabbath. You know I don't do many altar calls, but God was saying, you need to pray over my people. Mm. So the elders of the church come around, let's surround them, let's pray over them. Try to lay hands on them. God lays hands on us. He holds us with his righteous right hand. Mario, I'm going to start, and how about you finish? Okay. Dear Lord, I, I come to you with a humble heart. Your Bible verse says, Paul planted, Paul is watered, but only you give the increase. Lord, we're seeking to know you. There's a lot to unpack in Revelation. But you've opened a door today to the Church of Philadelphia. We want to be that church. Lord, we want the brotherly love to shine, not only for each other, but for our neighbors even. And sometimes that's hard. Sometimes they stick us and poke us and say things that hurt us. Lord, I know many people that are standing here want to be baptized. 
In Mark chapter 13, it says, repent and be baptized and be saved. It doesn't say you might. It says you will be saved. Some of them may just want extra prayer. Lord, I need that prayer in my life. I pray that our church family is praying right now. I don't have a special prayer. The prayer, Lord, is you. We're asking for your sweet presence. We want to be a part of your church. We want to see the revealing of Jesus Christ. So, Lord, I know you have upcoming baptisms. Lord, bless it even before it happens. And I know through baptism, you said you'll promise the Holy Spirit upon them. Lord, we even ask for that today. You have leaders that are staying up here, Lord. I know with Mario, I saw him playing a special music. You saw so much more. So, Lord, may it not be the way we see things. Lord, work upon our hearts as that door is open and we give our heart to you. But, Lord, change our hearts. Write your name upon our hearts and upon our foreheads. May it be permanent. May we receive the crown of life that you deserve that have given us. Lord, I also think in the Garden of Eden when you made Adam and Eve, you made them perfect in your own image. Lord, when you change us, you will make us perfect again back to the image of God. So, Lord, I ask your blessing to each person here. You know why they are up here. I pray that the Holy Spirit will be upon them as discernment, as we seek to know you, as we seek you as our Lord and Savior, the follow the shepherd of his sheep through that open door by your blood and your merits. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Father in heaven, Lord, I can't thank you enough for what you've done in my life. Yes. Lord, I can't believe that you've forgiven me, yes. that you've drawn me in, Lord, and shown me the truth. Lord, I can't believe that I get to stand up here with my beautiful wife and that she wants to make that same decision, Lord. I'm so thankful. And that my dear, dear friend Kit wants yes. to make that decision too. I'm just amazed, amazed. And I'm so grateful and thankful to you, Lord. Please be with each one of them, Lord. May they hold fast to your promises and to your word. May they just feel an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in their life. And may they just shine and tell others as well. Lord, anybody in the audience, anybody in the congregation whose heart was maybe too shy to come up here, Lord, be with them as well. Just know, just, just let them know how much you love them, Lord, and draw them ever closer. Be with each one of us, Lord, yes. until your soon return. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. God bless you. God bless you.